chapter of the book is three reasons your service dog may be fake. So three reasons your service dog may be fake. I'm not going to read you word by word, but here's the gist of it, okay? And before I go any deeper into this, people will question me like, well, you don't know how it is. They'll tell me you've never worked with service dogs. And all of that is a bunch of BS. I have trained service dogs. I have assisted a, uh, an organization, more than one organization, in the selection and the training of service dogs. I've been very involved in this. This is something that has been very close to me for a very long time. Something that I was very, very enthusiastic about before the industry and phonies, like people that are everywhere misrepresenting the industry, ruined it for me. So I do have a little bit of a background on temperament, selection, and task orientation of what a service dog is. So now, going into the book, going back to this, uh, three reasons your service dog may be fake. Reason number one, my service dog goes to hospitals and libraries for people to pet him. Okay, that's not a service dog, that is a therapy dog. Here is the basic of it, right? If you don't understand the difference between a therapy dog, a service dog, and an emotional support animal, your service dog is fake already. I can already tell you, if you do not understand the difference between those three, you do not need to have a service dog because you don't know what it is. If you truly don't understand the difference between an emotional support animal, a service dog, and a therapy dog, you don't know what you're doing. And you, uh, maybe you were scammed, maybe it wasn't your fault. But this is something that you should know. As a, as a service dog handler, somebody who has a service dog, you should know what a service dog is. There's never any doubt for me, if I have something, a specific tool, what that tool is for. If you give me a hammer, I know what that hammer is for. If you give me a drill, I know what that drill is for, okay? And a service dog is a tool. A service dog is a tool. Okay, it's the equivalent to your wheelchair. It's the equivalent to your crutches or your cane. That's what a service dog is. It does things for you that you cannot do for yourself. Anytime I rant about this, there's a couple of people that sometimes hate on me that tell me, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're talking about. Or they accuse me, just my, my recent post, somebody said, oh, you're just, you know, you're ableist and whatever, right? Uh, so a service dog is a tool. It is nothing more than a tool. It's supposed to improve the quality of life of the handler by doing something for the handler that the handler cannot do for himself. So I see this a bunch. And by the way, the number of fake service dogs I see baffles me. I, I I even get surprised. This is bad. I should not be surprised when I see a good service dog. It should be the opposite. I should be surprised when I see a fake service dog. And it's the opposite. I'm so used to seeing shitty service dogs that it's just not even a joke anymore. So I see this fairly regularly. I see people that have their service dogs. And even if their dogs are well-trained, like, that's a pass for people. They're like, well, look, my service dog, he downs when I tell him to down. Okay, uh, fine, that, that's great. But I know what your service dog is like. I actually know your dog, and it does not have the temperament. It barely even performs a task. I've seen these service dogs that they don't even perform the task. These people have told me, oh, my service dog does this for me. And then I see it happen, and the dog doesn't do shit. The dog is, you know, like they'll have a seizure. Their service dog just went and did something else. I thought your service dog was supposed to alert you. Or they like have a, a, you know, they're like, oh, my service dog does this, this, and this. Um, they go into that scenario and they're like begging their dog to do their task. Dude, your dog is not a service dog. Just because your dog can down and do a downstay and you can fucking put it at the door, at the store, which I see this bullshit too. They pull their dogs on a down at the Home Depot and they walk away from the dog and they're just basically baiting people. And people pass by like, oh my God. And then from a distance, they're like, don't pet my dog. 
bitch, get your dog under control. Why is your dog on a down by itself off leash by the door, by the sliding door at a store? Shouldn't be doing that. Your service dog, according to ADA, should be under control at all times. It should be leashed or harnessed unless it's performing a task. Your dog just being on a down 30 feet away from you, you're just showing off. You're just trying to call as much attention to yourself as possible. And this is what I see a lot. I see a lot of people that get their service dogs and it's just a way for them to call tons of attention from themselves because they didn't get it when they were little kids. Their parents didn't hug them enough or maybe they did something else that was fucked up and now they spend their whole lives trying to get attention from other people and validation and because they can't do it any other way, they go ding, 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 I have a service dog, look, it's got a vest to do this and I can fucking put her in a down at the store while the doors are sliding open and closed. That way anybody who tries to touch my dog because this fucking dog is just sitting there and they go, oh my God, dog, you can go scream at them, record it, I've seen this bullshit. They'll record it and they'll record the whole confrontation. And this lady didn't even know your dog was a service dog. And then, uh, and then you're, you're trying to, you know, bait this person into an argument. How do you have, I, th I thought you had, uh, uh, you know, social anxiety. How do you have social anxiety but feel very comfortable recording an entire confrontation that you really started? Okay, so I see that shit all the time. It pisses me off. Uh, okay, another reason. Uh, I put a vest on my dog so I can travel with him. So he's my service dog. All right, this is actually very common. A lot of people, going back to the ignorance, a lot of people don't know what a service dog is, so they think, oh, well, I could just get my pet, my dog, to go with me everywhere I go. Very easy, I'll just scam the system, I'll put a vest on my dog, service dog, and it should not be a service dog. I've seen service dogs climbing on the shopping carts where the bread is kept, doing nothing. They're just their pet, they just decided to bring them. Why is your dog on an area of the shopping cart where I put my bread, <laughs> right? Um, why is your service dog sitting at the table uh, at a restaurant? Your dog should not be doing that. Your service dog should not be sitting at the freaking table where other people sit and eat, okay? Um, so people are just putting vests on their pets, they're calling their pet service dogs, or they're self-diagnosing, I see this a lot too. Uh, another reason is my service dog has been trained in protection training or I do protection training with my service dog. Again, if you do not know that your service dog should not be doing protection training, what the hell are you doing? You should not have a, you automatically should be stripped out of that service dog or that service dog vest should be stripped right out of you or even the word service dog should be completely permanently taken out of your mouth if you didn't even know something as basic as your service dog should not be doing protection training. If you do not know that, you really should not have a service dog, period, ever, okay? So a service dog should never do protection training, whether it's in a sports fashion or for real, none of that. That is against the ADA. And the Department of Justice actually clarified because a lot of people were doing this. The Department of Justice clarified and said something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing, something along the lines of people have wrongfully um, assumed that service dogs and protection dogs are, are the same thing. And the department wants to reiterate that it is not the case and that you're not covered by the ADA if this is a service dog. And businesses can tell you to remove your dog. If your dog poses a threat, if your dog starts growling at people, if your dog becomes just a hassle, a business owner can come to you and tell you you need to remove that dog out of here, out of this facility, because it is being a hassle to the customers and it's unsafe. So this, well, it's my service dog, I, I gotta take him with me. You do not freaking know. If you don't know something as basic as that, you don't have to have, you don't need a service dog. You should not be self-diagnosing. Dude, I have anxiety. I freak out sometimes. I have social anxiety at times where I feel like the world is gonna crash on me. And yes, could I get a service dog? Could I self-diagnose and go with my dog everywhere? Dude, that would, that would cause more of a hassle to me than anything else. Okay, now that's just me. I'm not saying that I have disabilities, 
like some people that I know they actually have disabilities, extreme social anxiety, and their service dogs actually can't perform tasks. A service dog is task oriented. A service dog doesn't just make you feel good about yourself. It is actually task oriented. If the service dog just makes you feel good, that is really not a task. That will fall more under the category of an ESA. So be smart about this, okay? Do not be scamming the system. And uh, yes, there are shitty service dogs out there. Okay, your service dog should not growl at people, never, under any circumstances. You don't blame the person. I've seen service dog uh, handlers where their dog acts aggressive, which should never happen, and they'll blame the person. Well, he did this, that's why my dog growled at him. No, that dog should not be doing that. This is why the success rate for just selection of a service dog is very, very low because most dogs can't do this, all right? Um, your service dog should not be trained for protection as well. I'll, I'll just cover that. And uh, also, you shouldn't just grab a random dog off of the shelter and go, well, I'm going to train my service dog. I saw this on a Facebook group. Somebody posted, hey, I want to adopt uh, Malinois from a uh, rescue so I can make him a service dog. Okay, I get it. This person doesn't know, so I, didn't, I wasn't harsh or anything. I just gave this person some feedback. But this is something that a lot of people don't know. This is why this industry, this particular niche, this particular specialty is under so much trouble because it is full of ignorant people and nobody's saying anything. There is no regulation. The ADA is not clear. And so it leaves a lot of people to take advantage of the system or at least for a lot of people to be able to get scammed by people who take advantage of the system. So service dogs can be a great tool they can be, and I said it, they are a tool. They can be a great tool. They can really enhance their handler's uh, quality of life, but it needs to be done the proper way. Done properly, it is a great thing to see, to see a nice, properly selected, because selection is huge here, properly selected, properly trained, task-oriented, with a handler that actually needs the dog. It is really cool to see. Not just some asshole that didn't get attention from mommy and daddy and now they want attention and validation from the public so they get a dog that they don't have a fucking clue what it is or what it does and they just call it a service dog. That's not what a service dog is.